welcome back. Yeah, just put the tractor and boom here, ready to spray this um, paddock that I was talking about in the last one. I'll just give you a look at what we're actually targeting here. Uh, so, these little guys. So this is annual ryegrass, um, and this little fella's, he's almost enemy number one in the Australian cropping industry. Uh, he's had a, he's been very clever, he's been able to adapt, and look, there is a lot of resistance for what they call ryegrass resistance around the place. Uh, we have, don't have any um, that we know of, and we're probably having, having stock in our rotation and having a pasture phase in our rotation is, is, uh, is helping that a fair bit. Uh, but yeah, it's a grass weed, easy to control in canola and that, uh, your broadleaf crops, but very hard to control in, uh, in your cereals. So yeah, you sort of, your gra grassier type crops, wheat, barley, oats, that sort of thing. So yeah, there's a few different ways to attack it, but um, you know, the no-till system or minimum tillage system um, we become very reliant on yeah, our upfront, our, our chemicals or pre-emergent chemicals, our chemicals we put out um, before before we sow. And yeah, so and that's if uh, if you're not sort of rotating your chemicals and your crop types and that sort of stuff, you end up with with chemical resistance. So what we one of the sort of main ways to tackle it is we do what we call a double knock, and there's quite a bit here. Um, the sort of green tinge, the bulk of that is ryegrass. So we do what they call a double knock. So we'll come in now with um, just a dose of, of Roundup or glyphosate, the nasty one that everyone thinks is nasty. Uh, and then we generally leave it 24 hours and in front of the cedar we'll come back with uh, uh, our pre-em chemicals, but also a chemical called um, Gramoxone or Paracot or Diacot. Uh, and it is nasty. Uh, you're, you reckon glyphosate's nasty? You've, uh, it's got, it, glyphosate's got nothing on paraquat. So anyway, so we've got to be pretty careful when we use it. Um, so, but it's, it's basically uh, a contact spray, and it burns off. Um, it'll, bur it'll burn off the, um, the weed or plant. Um, yeah, you know, within that 24 hours. But they've come up with this, this double knock. Um, system that seems to seems to do a very good job on it um, because where we want to come back in with loosen this year we're a little bit as I said on a couple of the earlier videos we're a little bit limited with what um, pre-em chemicals we can use so it's sort of pretty pretty important we get the job right um, up the front so we've got good moisture here this is where we where we irrigated um, they are talking a bit of bit of rain towards the end of the week so I'm sort of hoping Hoping we can get this sown tomorrow, and then look if we got got five or ten mil of rain on it, that'd be perfect. So anyway, we'll get cracking and uh, yeah, get it done down the road. Oh right, days, so we've just had a load of gypsum delivered. Uh, we've got got about a hundred ton of this stuff coming. Looks a bit like uh, just looks a bit like sand, really. Um, and yeah, we all, we put it out. It's a good source of sulphur, so uh, half a ton of canola sort of like sulphur so half a ton of this to the hectare um, every four or five years or something's uh, pretty good for for the canola like it's enough for your canola um, requirements but uh, it's also good with um, sodicity in the soil and also helps with soil structure so this paddock here that we've got we put a bit of lime on it the other day and Brendan actually started to to plow it up but uh has yeah we sort of battled with it I'm not 100 percent sure why it's whether it's just a bit over compaction from the livestock or what but we have battled with it with um a bit of compaction and that sort of stuff so we're just gonna i don't know what he delivered here probably 35 tons something like that so we're gonna gonna chuck this out at however it works out to the hectare it'll be about a ton and a half to the hectare um yeah just to help with the soil structure so this stuff's about delivered to here. It's around about the 85 bucks a ton, so it's not, you know, it, it's it's not cheap. But um, in the long run, when you're trying to look after your soil health and that sort of stuff, it's just, it's really, it's just we use it as a maintenance rate sort of thing. Um, and the lime's the same. Like the lime's gone on, we put it on a couple of tons to the hectare, and that just keeps our, our pH in check. And you know that it's about a similar price now. Like it's, it's around the. 
I think it's similar, 85 and 90 dollars a ton. So you know, it's a 180, 170, 180 bucks a hectare. So, uh, but yeah, it's you just got to. They haven't. They've stopped making topsoil, so we've just got to look after it and um, and try and improve it all the time where we can. What are you doing? Why are you here on your own? Hmm. He's sound asleep and the rest of them have walked off and left him behind. Which is an ideal, so I'll just give him a turn the radio off or give him a lift over to the mob. Happens unfortunately, he was enjoying the sunshine and and uh, yeah. Mum and the rest of them had walked off and he was just left there on his own, so anyway. Just pick him up and and cart him over to the rest of them. He'll be right. Sort of helps. One thing that helps with the smaller paddocks. It's one thing we do it while we do it. So if this sort of thing happens, that um, hopefully they they mother up again, all right. And also when we trail feeding them, it sort of helps. So the ewes don't run off when you drive in the paddock. They're generally they're generally pretty good. Oh, sorry, buddy. Up you get. Oh, you get. He'll be right. He'll bellow and mum will find him. It just doesn't seem to be enough hours in the day at the moment, anyway. Uh, so we've got, we've just been burning again. Uh, I've got the, the, I spoke about earlier, um, the second lot of chemical on that paddock, the double knock. So I did that this morning. Uh, Brendan started sowing there now. I've just come down. We, um, the guys started the irrigator here on the grazing wheat that we sowed oh, last week or whenever it was now, those that have been watching all along. So I'm just going to come down and see. We're just putting 10 mil on it. I just want to come down and see whether there's been any uh, anything shot at all. One. No, he's only just. I'll see if I can find you a better one. It's not actually um, 10 mil, sort of not going too far, really, at the moment. It's. Maybe what we can find here. Oh, yeah, there's one. I don't know whether you can see that just at the. I'm gonna roll him over. He's just started to to shoot. So sort of 10 mil on here is probably pretty timely. They are talking a bit of rain the next couple of days. Ah uh, yeah, so we'll just have to suck it and see. The weather forecasts at the moment are a bit higgledy piggledy. They don't they're sort of uh, in the past when they've forecasted rain like they have and it hasn't rained, you would suggest there's gonna be a drought. So Anyway, we'll uh, just wait and see, but yeah, they, they do have 5 or 10 mil forecast from, uh, not tomorrow, the next day. And yeah, through to sort of, we're running into Easter, so through to sort of Easter. But anyway, we'll go on, uh, Brendan's getting along all right, I think. Tony's still out the back, he's just having an eye on some, some of the couple of stubbles that we burnt, didn't really burn all that crash hotly. Um, so we've actually got... Shear is here at home at the moment. Um, the neighbours next door that um, they just they've got a block next door to us, but their home base is um, I don't know 25 or 30 k's away. Uh, they've got sheep over here, so they're they're actually actually just using our shed at the moment um, shearing, so um, which is fine. So there's a bit of action going on in the shed there. We'll just come down here. Actually, just found in my travels. This will be a bit give you a bit better indication. There you go. It's uh, it's growing. You can see the little seed on the bottom and a couple of shoots out the bottom and the, the green shoot out the top. So, uh, yeah, 10 mil on this will be, you can actually see bits of rows up there when you look. So uh, the 10, 10 mil will be, be perfect on it and we'll just see if we don't don't get any rain over the, out of this change, we might, we'll chuck another 10 mil on it uh, over the weekend or after the weekend. Um, we've got till the end of the month and then they shut the irrigation water off on us. So it's pretty important that we, you know, 
as I've spoken about on the other videos, if you've been watching along for a while, we just we need to try and bank as much green feed as we can because you know, it can once things turn cold over winter and if it hasn't rained, um, yeah, you don't you don't get a lot of green feed. So um, there's plenty of irrigation water around at the moment and it's cheap. So we've still got a fair bit of our allocation left. Uh, but yeah, we'll just. We'll try, try and try and get as much feed up and going as we can before it does turn off. But uh, we just started the water over at the the dairy farm block that where we'd been doing the burn offs. Um, started it this morning, so um, it seems to be all sort of going to plan at the moment. But that's going to be not a lot of fun because it'll be getting up in the middle of the night to go and change water. So anyway, fun and games. I've just come over here to do a couple of running repairs on some bay outlets. Uh, yeah, know what's happened here. The, the um, chains are missing off off this, so um, it's just I've just got a couple of bits short bits of chain here, and they were just on there, and then they've just got a little hook at the back there. So I'll um, that's got a tear in it too. I don't know what's happened there. Anyway, we'll uh, patch this up and stop it. Try and get it to stop it leaking. So this first bay is already watered, we shut it off earlier on. So. so a little running repair sort of works, but what I've since discovered is the rubber flap, it's got a tear down the bottom there. Uh, yeah, so the water's just not, <laughs> they're not shutting off. So I'm, we've got the front end loader here, I'll have to um, yeah, get a bucket full of dirt and just block it off with a bucket full of dirt anyway, and we'll have to replace the rubber flap. Another day, I didn't sort of, sort of, should have checked it before we started, but I'd say whether it's been damaged when we put it in, um, these uh, haven't been used, these stops since we put them in. So anyway, we'll go up and put a bit of, put a bit of chain back on this other one up here, and uh, yeah, then we'll, we'll fill him in. It's not overly pretty, but yeah, hopefully it'll, uh, hopefully it'll fix the problem. And yeah, whether we just dig that stop out and now that I've covered it in mud and dirt, because it won't be a lot of fun to clean out with a shovel, so whether we just dig it out with a backhoe at some stage and just replace it. We've got plenty of other stops here that we can put in there, but yeah, I hadn't noticed it. I didn't check, to be honest, before we, we started filling the channel with water. So as I said, this is the first time we've watered it since we've um, had these bay outlets in. So anyway, it happens. So. An easy fix. Luckily we had the uh, backhoe on standby. Mm. Just dropped Brendan's ute up the paddock. Tony knocked off, so I threw the deadly treadley at the back rather than walking. And who should it be? It's Little Doggo. Oh, what are you up to? Do you come here often? Come on. Do do. Morning, we've run into another day. Oh uh, yeah, had a 1 a.m. water change, uh, so that was all right. And yeah, Brendan knocked off. He got this block here, there's 20 hectares in this irrigation block here done. Last night, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna a bit of dry land stuff here. I'm just going to start. It's a bit after seven o'clock, so uh, yeah, I'll get the wheels turning, and and uh, yeah, he'll come and hop on, and we're going to we've got another 25 hectares out at the other farm that we're going to sow, and that'll be the last of the grazing wheat then. 
but no, everything seems to be rocking along all right. Water's doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is good. So, uh, yeah, we'll get rolling. We got that paddock finished. Uh, yeah, I was going to get a bit of footage of it for you, but I forgot all about it. So, that's all right. There'll be plenty of that to come. Just over here with the water. Uh, yeah, just my little mate sent me a text message. So, I just thought I'd show you these these Dropbox outlets um, with them actually working. A bit of crap in the in the channel, but that's all right. So yeah, simple as just winding the winch up. Go quick. Uh, just like that, and it just holds it up, and they're, they're watertight, 100% watertight is their one of their big cells. So yeah, uh, and what the guys did have done here when they laid this out, we bought this farm already laid out um, they've got a series of pipes through the through the bank here so you can actually drive along um, to get to the bay out there which is yeah quite clever but they've yeah spent a lot of money um, doing it but yeah no it works works really well you just, yeah don't have to you're not bogging around getting your feet wet like what we do at home so a fair portion of it is set up like of this block is set up like that so uh, yeah no it works well but Anyway, that might do for this one. We'll catch you on the next one. See ya. Bye.